It's time for Recipe of the Day. On this show, I talk a lot about little easy things that you can do to improve a simple dinner. Sometimes it's having just a fun side dish to go with your like basic chicken and broccoli. Sometimes it's a new ingredient or seasoning, a little cheese, a sauce, you know what I mean? That is the kind of thing that I'm talking about today. This is a homemade mango and pineapple salsa that uses frozen mango and pineapple. Now, why frozen? Because the fresh mango and pineapple are not always in season. They're not always ripe and ready to use. So that's one reason. But the bigger reason is because I always have frozen mango chunks and frozen pineapple chunks in my freezer for making smoothies for my kids. And so if I don't have a lot on hand to transform a weeknight dinner, if I've just got some chicken and some frozen corn, maybe a can of black beans, I can then whip up this quick salsa. And then all of a sudden dinner is going in a much more fun and delicious direction. You know what I mean? Okay, so how do you make this? You get out a food processor with the blade attachment, or if you have like a heavy-duty blender, mine is a Blendtec. It works for this. You're adding in two cups of those frozen mango chunks, but you do need to thaw them first because we don't want a frozen salsa here. The same is going for the two cups of frozen pineapple chunks. They need to be thawed. The easiest thing to do is to just stick them all in a Ziploc bag, put them in a sink with warm tap water. That bag and they'll be thawed in no time. You can also do it in the microwave on the defrost function or take them out the night before and put them in the fridge. Any of those options are going to work. So you have the two cups of the frozen mango chunks that you've thawed and two cups of the frozen pineapple chunks that you've thawed. Or you could use fresh of both of those if they are in season. That's going to work as well. That is going to that food processor along with half of a small jalapeno that you've seeded and roughly chopped, half of a small red onion that you've also roughly chopped, and two meat medium-sized tomatoes that you seed and roughly chop. So I find the easiest thing to do is to cut it in half and then squeeze it over a bowl so that a lot of the liquid comes out of there. If you forget and you chop it first, then just get out a lot of paper towel, maybe like six sheets on a plate, transfer your chopped tomatoes onto there and just kind of give them a little squeeze, wrap them up with that paper towel and give them a little squeeze. That will work to get a lot of that liquid out as well. I know we're saying seeded, but it's really about the liquid that we're trying to get out of those. And then also two small cloves of garlic garlic peeled and roughly chopped. Now, why are we roughly chopping all of this before putting it into the food processor? It's actually kind of important in this case because we're using those chopped chunks of mango and pineapple. That's how they're sold. And we don't want to end up with a puree. We kind of just want the food processor to give it all a really good chop and mix. And so if we started with all those other things whole, whereas the mango and the pineapple were already in chunks, then things wouldn't get small enough in time. You'd have like these big pieces of jalapeno and onion going on in there. So you are chopping up those things before you add them to the food processor. Then also add in a half teaspoon of salt and half cup of loosely packed fresh cilantro leaves. And I'm just going to say, if any of those things don't appeal to you, if your family doesn't like spicy foods, for instance, you can skip the jalapeno, maybe do some red bell pepper instead. If you don't want that onion flavor in there, you don't have to have it. So this is adaptable, really, really, really versatile. Okay. So once you have all those things in the food processor, you are giving it a pulse. Put the lid on first and pulse it until it's saucy, but with some small pieces remaining. It is still going to be a very thick mixture at this point. You're going to transfer to a medium bowl and then cover and refrigerate for 30 minutes. You could use it before doing that, but I find that the salsa thins out to just the right texture as the salt is drawing some of the moisture out of those ingredients. So that little time in the fridge is going to help. But don't worry, it's not going to thin out too much. It ends up just a really good texture to kind of cling to things that you dip into it. You're going to dip tortilla chips in there or dip shrimp in there. Or if you're going to kind of pour it over your chicken, anything like that is going to work really, really well. You can serve this cold straight from the fridge or you can even warm it up and have it as like a warm fruity salsa. Now, I want to ask, did you learn something in this episode today? If you found any of my tips helpful, if you like this recipe, I would really love it if you checked out the mini course that I have on Cook the Story. These are really, really quick. You sign up and then for like five to eight days, you get one email a day, all on the theme that you've signed up for, full of tips, recipes, and ideas to make you a better cook. You can sign up for one course or for all of them. Head over to cookthestory.com slash courses and you will see them all there. I will put the link to this mango salsa recipe in the show notes for this podcast episode, or you can head to cookthestory.com slash ROTD and get the 
the link there. Everything there is arranged by date, so it's helpful to know that today is August 6th of 2024. I'm Christine Pittman from CookTheStory.com, TheCookful.com, the all-new chicken cookbook, and from this podcast, Recipe of the Day. I hope you have a great day. Let's get cooking. (laughs) 